そしてこんにちはだ後宮家顧問錬金術師黄金のベアトリーチェそなたの喧嘩ここよりはわらわが買い取ろう Alright guys, welcome back to some more Umineko When they cry Here we go, it seems like we're gonna have a fight between Beato and Erika In the meta world of Nazis I guess Because this isn't the actual Beato within the meta world of battlers This is a different Beato uh, Because that Beato is currently in a doll like state She can't communicate But this Beato is very ready to go And here we go, they're having the fight because Erika at the end of the last part uh, was about to declare Kenzo dead. Right? She did, she's about to go. Alright. Uh, it's time to deduce that Kenzo's been dead all along and Nazi's been hiding him. And uh, here we go. Now they're gonna have a, f a fight. And let's see who's uh, who's got it. Let's see let's see how this is gonna go. Um, of course, more things happened last part. I mean it started with Rudolph going up the la the ladder up to the study, breaking the window and all that. Uh, talked about how Kiria was very uh, light, 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 uh, light mood considering the events. Uh, then you know, then Erica and you know part of the rest of the family uh, talked about how sus Nazi has been and how she's the most suspicious person because she is. That's just how it is. Um, but uh, that, that, that is what's uh, that is exactly what's making me less suspicious of Nazi actually um, And Erica going about how it's a third-rate murder mystery and all that Eva even admitted to seeing uh, Nazi uh, coming out of the study uh, During the night or the evening of yesterday, but she didn't say it because obviously Obviously, the beef between Eva and Nazi, so Eva, Eva was like, alright, I'll shut up about it. Until Nazi, you know, told, you know, got it out of her. And was like, ah, but you even saw me get out at 11 uh, o'clock uh, yesterday. And Eva goes, oh yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> so, uh, she, you know, she was too pre preoccupied with them finding the goal and all. So, totally, totally, she... She uh, refrained from mentioning that she saw Nazi come out of the study at 11. But she didn't see Kinzo. She didn't see her meeting up with Kinzo. She, she only saw Nazi coming out of the study at that time yesterday. So, and yeah. Then they went after Nazi for having a little bit of weird speech. Contradictory speech. Uh, regarding what she was saying earlier. Compared to what the servants were, what the servants were saying as well. Uh, how Kinzo likes to often get out of the study, contradictory, blah blah blah, and uh, yeah, Beric is saying this is too boring. I've already figured it out. Kinzo's been dead all along, and now she's been pulled here in this meta world, and the fight is about to start. Here we go. Let's get right into it. <laughs> Glad to meet you. I'm the detective of this game, Furudo Erika. Oh, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, and soon to bid you farewell. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of Lady Burn Castle herself. This is her piece. This is her. This is her human piece. So. This is, this is, this is, the, Burn better not have any other pieces than this, as in, better not having any other proper pieces than this, because this is Burn in the flesh, basically. Burn <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the way she smiles so purely, you know, she just looks like a pure happy child, like maybe she wants some dessert or something. <laughs> but in reality, she's saying, I feel like you couldn't even begin to compare with her. Smile. I accept your challenge. Here we go. 
From an armchair in a metal like space? No. What's an armchair? How does that look like? I'm gonna Google armchair real quick. Arm chair. It's just a chair. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's okay. I see why it has its own de 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 denomination. Denomination? Is that a word for. Whatever. You get my point. I see why it has its own thing. Alright. Fair. <laughs> hey, 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 the artist that also doesn't make his debut until next year. It hasn't come out yet. What? <laughs> Your anachronisms. <laughs> it's nineteen eighty six. Don't go past your time, yo. <laughs> so, Erica is aware of things that haven't happened yet, or books and, and novels that haven't even come out yet, but she's still human that lives in the human world. But she's still. There's so many weird meta things going on. I don't. Get it. Although we had that whole thing with Rudolph, that was also a meta thing. Because that TV show hadn't come out until 2001. That's way past 1986. That's 15 years later. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really know anymore. Alright, we're just going full meta. <laughs> Ningen! What is this dragon with super all over again? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start here Ningen all the time. Ningen. Ah, man. Goku Black, what's up, bro? Where are you at? <laughs> Zaras, bro. <laughs> they had to snap their fingers, and something bounced around the room at terrifying speeds. Oh, is it the stakes? The seven stakes? Lucifer? It was the witch stake. Okay. The witch's wedge, which contained the power of the blue truth within it. Wait, what? The witch is using the blue truth this time? How does that work? I thought that was a human side power. What's this? She's... Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, okay. Alright. Blue wedge. Alright. Uh. Of course, a mere human like Erika couldn't follow its terrible speed with her eyes. Erika understood this, so she didn't attempt to look every which way stupidly trying to spot it. <coughs> Battler! <coughs> ah, so it is Lucifer. I guessed correctly, let's go. But why is she blue though? Isn't, aren't her stakes supposed to be red? I mean, she she's wearing red as well. Um, and... Red truths. I thought that was the, a witch side thing. Which is why I was so sh yeah. Why would we flip the switch? I was so surprised that Eric is in the the red truth. Why, why have we flipped the, the gears? Why is it? Why is Beato now using blue truth and, uh, wedges, and why is Erica the one using red truth? What's going on? Why have we flipped it around? With a terrible sound. Lucifer's blue stake buried itself into Erica's right collarbone. Ouch! That's gotta hurt. Yo, what the heck? It shot all the way through and out of her back. Okay, we're back in the study now. Spinning as she rebounded, rebounded off the walls, Lucifer landed in front of Beato and disappeared, laughing shrilly. <laughs> Erica wasn't blown back. However, a blue wedge was stuck deeply into her. 
How does that work? But this is... I mean, I guess this is Nazi's Beto, so she's supposed to be working for the human side, kinda. With the blue truth, I guess. So she's trying to... Because she's trying to count... Because to be fair, from Beto's side, she's trying to counter that Kinzo is already dead. She's trying to give arguments for why Kinzo is alive and how Kinzo could have possibly survived. I see. From that POV, I can understand why Beto is using the blue truth. But still, it's kind of ironic how Erika was using red truth, and now we're seeing the witch side using blue truth. Even though it's not really the witch side, it's kind of not to use witch side. It's different. It's weird. Meta stuff is happening. Alright, blue truth is valid right now. Do you have any red or something else to counter with? Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna need to be writing down these blue truths once this part is over. Oh, it's gonna be my homework. <laughs> Beato announced that with an expression worthy of her title as witch. Erica, on the other hand, was silent. Was she? Was she too shocked to speak? Come on, man. No, she's not. There was no anguish in her expression. She was just quietly listening to Beato's blue truth. No, judging by her disdainful expression, it will, it will probably be more appropriate to say that Beato's words went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> Good though. <laughs> this thing really st is stuck good. It won't come out. She tried pulling f uh, from the front and the back of the blue wedge that pierced her, but it didn't budge an inch. Yikes. And that doesn't hurt? It's stuck in your collarbone. Does, does that not hurt? That's gotta hurt, man. Ah! I would hate to be stabbed in my collarbone like that. That was rude. However, her indifferent, relaxed expression didn't budge an inch either. <laughs> There's no relative available to the likes of you, in other words, it's checkmate. I don't know about that, she was using red last part, bro. She, uh, well, not last part, but a few parts ago. Detective's authority, yo! Oh, that, that was crazy. I still can't believe she said that. Detective's authority. Hey, yo, listen to me. This is one of those spaces. In that case, I'll need a piece suitable for fighting a witch. She's the detective. I'm the detective that'd be my role to deal with the human culprit. You are a witch. There is a piece better suited to the role of dealing with witches and demons. So you're trying to be focused on who Lambda Delta's human piece is, right? Who's she's the culprit, right? You're trying to find that out. But you're saying because you're a detective, you're the human counterpart, you are just, you, you think there's a piece better suited to deal with Beato. So, Burn? You're gonna have Burn go at it? But Burn's currently fighting Lambda, how does that work? Will Burn take a break and get, get, get back to you like, Hey, alright, human self, alright, you're fighting Beato, alright, I'll help you out. Alright, because Burn is a witch, witch versus witch, I mean, it's better suited. Justice. This is a new soundtrack. Alright. Justice. Miss Doranori. Who? What? The Miss Delanor? Delan she pronounced it Delanor. Who's that? Uh, is this a reference I'm supposed to know or It looks like it's your turn. Wait. Is this a new character? Is there, is there a reference I'm missing? Delanor. 
Huh? Oh, I got shocked her. Okay. Is it? Is it? Is, 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 is. Who's the? Who's the, Who's this? Oh, she. Is it, why is she so surprised? Is this a spooky person? Are they scary? Uh, are they? Are they? Do they have feet? Are they impressive? I don't know. What this is the the Lanor. Okay, uh, that name sounds cool. You know. <laughs> what? So is it a new piece? I guess it's a new piece. Miss L the Lanor. The what? The ten witch hunting wedges, the archbishop of witch hunting, the Lanor. What, what witch hunting wedges? So she's gonna counter her blue wedge, Beata's blue wedge, with her witch hunting wedge, archbishop of witch hunting. So she she specialize this Miss the Lanor speciali specializes in witch hunting. I am I, I, let me see the design then. Let me see the design. There's no more feeling peace for battle against devils and demons. Um. All right. Let's see. Um. One second, y'all. Uh... Sorry, alright, my bad, I just got a message. So anyway, anyway, we're, we're getting to choose a new piece and, and I'm getting distractions. Here we go, here we go, sorry. Alright, the greatest natural element of which is the, the Lanor. That's how you pronounce I hope that's how you pronounce it. I mean, that's how I heard the voice actors, uh, actors uh, pronounce it, so I hope that's correct. My double Erica and the greatest natural enemy of which is the, the Lanor. The Lanor. Alright. Oh, this is chess reference that I'm not getting because I don't know chess in English. <laughs> what the hell? Ah, right, is Burn getting the upper hand now? What in this three-way battle? Is Burn about to get the upper hand? Is she about to take over with with this new piece? The seventh rank with my two rooks. Here we go. Oh oh, she does look like an archbishop. That's her. Oh, yellow eyes. Yo, the air shone brightly, and the piece Eric had gathered there showed its form. Hey yo! Okay, okay. White hair, or silver hair, I guess. Curly hair, yellow eyes, and she does look like an archbishop. She, why does she reminds me? She reminds me of Lavenza from Persona Five. <laughs> what? Did, is that just me? Wait, wait, wait. Let me Google Lavenza real quick. She looks like Lavenza. Okay, no. Okay, maybe not. I could see Lavenza being a, a, a an Emilico character, not gonna lie. She her the dress she's wearing as well, she looks like a witch. <laughs> I mean I mean okay, she gives me a slightly Lavenza vibes. Or Caroline and Justine, I guess, the, the sisters. I mean the combining to her in the end, so I I I don't know. I, I I'm getting the my first impression is she looks like Lavenza. And Levent also had like silver hair, right? Yeah, I'm, I've just googled it and yeah, blonde hair. Ah, it's more like blonde hair, but she also has the yellow eyes and a similar blue outfit. Although she was, she was, she's a jailer though. Levent is a jailer, so uh, I, I don't know, man. 
don't know. She's, I, and she's an archbishop. I guess they have a different profession. But she's just giving me Lavenza vibes, shit off the bat. But uh, I'm sure her personality is going to be completely different because uh, it's <laughs> Erica's piece after all. <laughs> I mean, La Lavenza is a really, really nice girl, and this, this, this is probably not going to be that. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. All right. All right. It was a form that resembled a cleric, perfect for confronting an evil witch. Ah, I see. Now, now you're bringing. Okay, now you're bringing the uh, the cleric side against the witch side. All right, that fits. That fits. You know. Please to meet you. Why is you in katakana? Alright, what well, that be? Wait, what? Nox? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Now you're trolling us. <laughs> you troll. <laughs> the Lanor Enox. <laughs> what does the A stand for? Wait. What does the. What does the. Oh, I'm sure it stands for Archbishop. That would make sense. If not, I don't know. The Lanor Arch Archbishop Nox is my name. Name is also in Katakana, by the way. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's that's funny. <laughs> Nox is his name. <laughs> Why Nox? What? Hey, oh, don't tell me she's about to come in here like Nox commandments. Remember them. They're my commandments. Yeah, they're, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm the Archbishop uh, form of Nox. <laughs> Even though the atmosphere in this space could be cut with a knife, she introduced herself in a neat and frank manner. Her out of place appearance, completely different from those of the demons and witches, felt blatantly odd and had a kind of sever severity to it. <gasps> Beta's never met her before! Because so far, Beta's met everyone we've seen, you know, before, right? She's met the Chester sister sisters, she had met the. Uh, the stakes of I mean, the stakes work for her and Ronave and Vergelia. We we know we know she but she knows all of them too, right? This is the first time we meet a character, just getting into a new character that Beta hasn't seen before. She and Beta had already seen Lambda and Burn before, but this is the first time she meets uh, the Lanor. So uh -huh. Therefore, this truly doesn't feel like a first meeting. Okay, wow. She, but she, she's, she's got clout then. Delano's got clout. You know her. You've heard the rumors. She's got clout. Okay, she's clouded. That's good to know. That's good to know. Is Delano supposed to be Kiria? By the way, just just immediate, just like an immediate guess of who as who her human counterpart, if she even has a human counterpart, could be. Just immediate right away. Could it be Kiria? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, Kiria was the one that you know helped Erika deduce what's going on by asking the question all the way back when to begin with, with Nazi. So, maybe Delano is supposed to be the Kiria counterpart. If so, then I wonder who Rudolph's counterpart is gonna be then. If he, if it's gonna get, exist. There's a chance she's not. But I'm just saying, the, 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 the hair color is the same between the Lanor and Kiri, I'm just saying. She does have yellow eyes, which is just so spooky. I remember when I first met Lavenza in Persona 5, I also thought her yellow eyes were spooky. I, I, you know, red eyes, I can handle, especially when it comes to anime, I'm used to it, right? Red eyes, I mean, like another Persona example is Makoto. Red eyes, ah, yeah, sure. But yellow, big yellow eyes, yo, what the heck? <laughs> Who? 600 pages long? Also, why is she randomly talking katakana sometimes? The same goes for me in katakana. Eiserne Jungfrau, that's German, that's hella German, has a detailed file on you 600 pages long. 600 pages? Who the hell writes 600 pages of Beato? Dude, get a life! What the hell? Who is Eiserne Jungfrau? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to look at the character files. <laughs> I always look over those. This doesn't feel like a first meeting to me either. Every, every last word in her sentences end with Karakana. I say Karakana, obviously we can't see what's Karakana and what isn't, but the Vision Novel has already stated before that when 
or I believe it was someone in the comments as well in my videos told me that when the letters are, are scribbled like this and fonted like this, that means in Japanese it's supposed to represent Karakana, I believe. Just like that's why Beatorice's name is in Karakana. I'm used to that. But why is why is the end of her sentences like that? I wonder. I wanna look up the the tips for character files here real quick. Alright, so we have the Lanor A Nox is um Okay, she's not here. Um The Isarne Is Isarne Jungfrau uh, is not here. If you guys are German, I, I know I probably butchered that name. I'm not trying to be German authentic. Uh although I, I, a, a German girl in my high school did say that my German wasn't hot bad, my pronunciation. Uh, but at the same time, I was back when I was actually studying German in school. Now I haven't, I've left it because I don't really, <laughs> I haven't kept up with studying German because I don't really, uh, I'm not very passionate about learning the language. But, uh, Jungfrau, have that. Uh, okay, Burn Castle's double in servant. Wait, that's Erica. I'm trying to learn about the Lanor. Uh, so here's her full design. Uh, she also has a, a little bit of thigh out. Just, just saying, just noting that, uh, giving, giving uh, Shannon vibes, right? Let's see Shannon here real quick. Um, let's see, where's Shannon? There she is. You know, got, got her a little bit of thigh out. Anyone else that has a little bit of thigh out? Battler? Nah, you don't have thigh. You're boring. Jessica, I think, has a little bit. Of yeah, Jessica's thighs out, full out, alright. Uh, not you know she's wearing full dress, not ever, no, eh, nah. Kitty is not, I don't think, no. Erica? Nah, no thigh out, she's wearing Jessica's old clothes. Lanjo, <laughs> do you have thighs out? Uh, okay, 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 okay. Why? Guys, I'm sorry. You're probably wondering, I mean, what are you doing? Why do you why are you wondering who has thighs out right now? What about the seven stakes? Real quick, real quick. They do, see? The seven stakes have their thighs out, alright? Lambda. Uh the, her knees. Uh, this is hardly it's like the end of her thigh. I don't know, I'd hardly say Gop. Gop seems like yeah, yeah, but I mean Gop has everything on the side out. Like her entire side uh, angle is out. It's kinda wild. Uh, Ronobe, you should have your. Ronobe, what are you doing? You should have your thighs out. What you doing, bro? Uh, burn, yeah, only knees, just like, uh, just like Lambda. Beta's just, yeah, okay. And Erica, Battler, no thighs out, unfortunately for you. That's crazy, bro. But the Lanor, a little bit. On the side, a little bit of time. Okay, anyway, anyway, let's get to the important part. A member. Oh wait, what? Oh, so Isarne Jungfrau is just an organization name or a squad name, kind of like the Chester sisters. They were, I remember the Chester sisters were part of this squad. I forgot what they were, what the squad was called again. So, um, okay, so it's, I, I thought Isarne Jungfrau was a, was a person for a second, but I guess not. So, the Lanor A. Knox, a member of Isarne Jungfrau, the seventh Distriction Repentance Enforcement Agency of the Great Court of Heaven. Pucci, where are you at, bro? Enrico Pucci is probably the leading this. <laughs> Chief Inquisitor, ranked Archbishop, first class, goes by the name Delanor of the Ten Wedges or Death Sentence Delanor. Oh, that second nickname is much better, yo. That's 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 threatening, yo. Death Sentence Delanor. Watch out! <laughs> Alright. Uh, she gets the name Death Sentence. Yeah, why does she get that name? Because, though Inquisitors normally judge their targets to determine whether they deserve the death penalty or not, the Lanor, as the Chief Inquisitor, Chief Inquisitor, let's go! She's clouted! She's clouted, yo! Let's go! Is only dispatched after a case has been vigorously inspected by the Great Court. Therefore, the very act of dispatching her is equivalent to a death sentence. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh, wow, this is long. Holy crap. Long description. Alright, uh, okay. Um, her father was a legendary inquisitor, but he broke the rules and was like, executed. That's crazy. She has daddy issues then. Oh, oh, she wouldn't be the first one. 
Okay, uh, she was uh, the one who interrogated and executed. Oh! <laughs> 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 You had been the first half, not gonna lie. <laughs> yo, yo, we have another menace in our hands. She's a menace, yo. She executed her own dad. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. I was like, oh, that's too bad. She's got daddy issues. She's probably, she's probably trying to. She probably has this journey of like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what's right because my father didn't do it correctly. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna be a proper inquisitor. Nah, nah she was the one that interrogated and executed it. <laughs> Yo, Yo, that's good. I, 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 I like her already. I don't know anything about her, but this description, yo. <laughs> well, it was a legendary inquisitor, but he broke the rules and was executed. So you go, oh, okay, well, that's too bad. And then, then she's the one that did it. <laughs> All right. Since that time, she's stopped growing. Ah, oh, and both her body and mind remain eternally those of a young girl. Ah, oh, that's too bad. It is whispered that her heart also died at that moment, but she does not see it that way. Oh, okay. So maybe there's something deeper going on there. Her primary weapons are the conceptual arms Red Key and Blue Key. They take the form of a long sword and a short sword. So I guess Red Key is long sword and Blue Key is a short sword? Okay. Her primary weapons. The conceptual arms. Sure. Alright, the Lanor. Let me check the tips file. Let me check the tips file. We're going to... Yeah, okay, there we go. I signed a Jungfrau. Now we get to learn about their org organization or this... This reinforcement agency. One of the repentance enforcement agencies supervi supervised by the Great Court of Heaven. Its area of jurisdiction is the 7th District. Headed up by first class Archbishop Delano, so she's kind of the, the, the header, she's the one that um, that is basically the leader, right? It is made up of seven inquisitors and several assistant inquisitors, so in the seventh dis dis district with seven inquisitors, so you're telling me we're gonna meet six others like her? That's kind of crazy. That's a lot of characters to be introduced. It's kinda like, gonna be like the seven stakes, I mean, not all of them can get equal um equal screen time like the seven stakes we don't truly care about all of them fully right the stakes that we care more about than others like we care about lucifer and mammon more than a lot of the others for example um but yeah okay uh, the unit is tasked with performing heresy interrogations carrying out executions and sometimes bestowing redemption okay However, in almost all cases, the Great Court of Heaven considers sending them only after prelim preliminary interrogation has been conducted and a provisional guilty verdict obtained. So they are no different than an execution squad in practice. Practice, dang, okay. In almost all cases. And... So, it's just like when we read about the Lanor. Basically... When she goes out, it's basically a death sentence. Death sentence the Lanor. Because you don't send her out until you've already done a preliminary, proper, uh, run-through interrogation. You don't just send out the Lanor, the, the, big, the big boy. <laughs> or big girl, I guess. <laughs> you don't just send them out. Alright. Uh, um, their spectacular achievements are great in number, and they are extremely well, extremely well known. Even among the other agencies, other famous enforcement agencies include the SSVD of the 8th District. It is rumored that the group's leader, Wizard Hunting Wright, also known as the 20 Wedges, is even more powerful than the Lanor. Oh! Wizard Hunting Wright! Rumor, rumor. We don't know anything about this, this Wright person, but uh... Mm, now, now I'm interested. Now, now I want to know about this, this this right guy. Ooh, tw tw known as the Twenty Wedges, even more powerful than Lano. I don't know. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds interesting. I, I like power. But okay, that sentence the Lano. I send a Jungfrau. There we go. We got a little description of them. So I send a Jungfrau has a detailed file only 600 pages long, which is wild. 
I was looking over those, so this doesn't feel like a first thing to me either. In Katakana, for some reason. Um, so, 600 pages of Beto, right? That's that's sad, y'all. Who's the Secretary of Hell? So the Secretary of Hell could summarize those 600 pages in a mere six letters, really? Six letters? Wait a minute, the epitaph! The first twilight! Aha! Which six letters are those? That's how we figure out the epitaph. That's a big hint right there. <laughs> Allow me to ask. Okay, so all of the Lanor's sentences end in Karakana. The, the last word always ends in Karakana for some reason. Okay. Beato said a lot in Japanese, but in English it's only translated to danger. Oh, that's the six letter word. Okay. The six letter word for Beato is danger, and she just did that in Japanese. Got it. Danger. D A N G E R. I wonder if danger is the six letter word we're supposed to take in the epitaph. I don't know. Well, if you take the D for the Lanor out, which is also the Willa D from One Piece, but you also have D from the Lanor, you take the D out, you get anger from danger. Aha! Uh -huh. Would you look at that? See? Weird, isn't it? That's a good summary. <laughs> when I get back, out of respect to you, I will close out your file with an additional two letters for a total of eight. Danger. Us? That doesn't work. That would be nine characters. How would that work? Danger... Dangery? I don't know. Executed. <laughs> executed! Ah, that's the eight letters. Is executed eight letters? Let's see, four, that is eight. Yep, that is, wow, okay. <laughs> Some ex... Cute now. Mm. Flatter will get you nowhere, my guest. I, Chief Inquisitor Delano, do you humbly accept my role as your opponent. Hey, hey, she's clouded. Don't disrespect her like that. What's up? <laughs> After making a show of tapping the blue wedge that pierced her with her finger, Erika shrugged as though taunting Beatrice. <clears throat> You're wasting time, huh? So not to seeing all this happen, right? Naturally, I mean, this is her delusions and all, or whatever. So, Eric is just hopped in. I can leave. I can leave this room at any time and go anywhere. That is useless. Oh. Huh. Okay. Well, she's making a different face than uh, her voice sound is sounding. There will be no escape. No one can evade me. All the last words in Karakana. たしかお父様が突然目を覚ましてどこかへ行ってしまった可能性は否定できないわ。でもね、それはありえないって断言できるのよ。なぜかわかる。Yes, why, Eva? Why didn't Father bolt off? Why 
did she put the tape here this episode just like she did in episode one are you saying that you stood outside the store all night watching to make sure the head didn't take a step outside so just like in episode one i'm guessing eva after seeing nazi go out the study at 11 at 11 o'clock yesterday put a tape on this door uh since then and she hasn't um but it hasn't been removed until the store was open just now right is that what she's about to say she put a tape uh -huh. this little guy right here huh what acil what's happening gertrude who are you who, who are you gertrude is oh is she another one is she another inquisitor she's one of because the, there's seven of them right so the landlord is the head and i'm, I'm she's one of them one of the other six that is in this isana uh, Jungfrau um, organization. I should, I should Google Translate what that means. Wouldn't Jungfrau? Isn't Jungfrau is woman, right? Women. Jungfrau. What would that mean? Young women? I don't know. I Sarne. For your attention, I beg to inform you of the following. Why? Guards, you're hereby ordered to blockade the study door. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna Google Translate real quick. Okay. Uh, I Sarne. From German to, to English. Iron? I Sarne is iron. So, iron young women? <laughs> young. Okay, what does young mean? Boy, right? Jung, Junge. I thought Jung meant young. Yeah, I'm right. Jung. S and Frau is woman, right? Or girl? Woman. It is woman. I'm right. I'm right. So if you do Jungfrau, you'd get young woman or young women, right? Jungfrau in German. Virgo. What? Virgo? What? 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 Virgin? Oh! That could be it, you know. Virgin could be right. Person die noch keinen Geschlachter Geschlachtsverkehr gehabt hat. What? I don't. Wait. Ice. I don't want to Google Ice Sarne. Iron Maiden. Okay, that makes more sense. So Jungfrau stands for Maiden then. Iron Maiden would make sense. I don't want to Google shit up I sent a Jungfrau because I'm sure Umineko stuff is going to pop up. I don't want to get spoiled, obviously. Jungfrau is a summit in Switzerland as well. Okay, it's a summit in... in okay. Translated is maiden or virgin. So, Jungfrau means both maiden and virgin. Uh, I'm going to guess an Eisern is iron. I highly doubt that... I I Cerner Jungfrau means Iron Virgins. I'm sure it means Iron Maidens or Iron Maiden. That would make a lot make I'll make I'll make a lot more sense. <laughs> Although they are clerics and that, right? So vir you have Virgin Mary. So maybe it's a maybe it's a double double meaning. The author trying to tell us that you know, haha, they're not into you know Christianity with uh, Virgin Mary, but they're also maidens, Iron Maidens, maybe. Maybe? I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna double check that I surname does mean uh, iron. It does mean iron. Okay, I surname is iron. And Jungfrau is maiden maiden or virgins, but I'm gonna go with the uh, most likely. I'm gonna go with um. I'm sure it means maidens. Or maiden, but it could be a double joke, a double bluff from the author to tell us that, like what I was just talking about earlier. Anyway, we have Gertrude here, a new, another one of the, uh, I'm sure another one, another Inquisitor from Isarna Jungfrau. Uh, she also has her thighs out. That random detail, why not? Uh, I, I guess all of them do. Um, the keys forming a cross. It, for her head uh, band thing here, this is both for her and for um, 
the landlord that we just saw a second ago, and there's some there's that here too. We also have this badge going on, and otherwise she she she, she just looks like um. She does just look like a revised version of a uh, a uh, a maid, honestly. So yeah, b b b b okay. For your attention, I beg to inform you of the following: Be advised that entering or ex exiting through this door is impossible. Guards, you are hereby you are hereby ordered to blockade the study door. Well, that's troublesome for you, isn't it, Beato? The doors to heaven opened with a strong, unrelenting radiance like the sun's. The doors to heaven? The pearly gates? And Lanor's subordinates appeared. Oh, all of them. All six of them. Because there's her and plus the six others. You have seven in total. They're all appearing. So if Gertrude is the first one we see, are we going to see some others as well? Their words were clad in the red truth and cut off, and cut off the witch's method of escape. Oh, so they're all coming in with the red. They can use the red truth then? They have that ability? <gasps> the, wait! Wait, what? You're just Jester for one zero. Get out, you're not a new character. No, I'm joking, don't get out. You can stay, you're funny. But, what? I thought we were gonna see the other Inquisitors. Unless you're trying to claim that Chester is also an Inquisitor. I mean, I guess they're all, they're similarly connected in a way. Chester phone zero right here. She's here too. Okay. Are we, gonna, are we also gonna meet Chester forty five? We are. Forty five is here too. Okay. But now you're working against her. So now you're working against Beato. But not only are you working against Beato, you're working with heaven. <laughs> We're dispatching according to the Alliance Agreement hashtag 1516 and a request from the Great Court of Heaven. We apologize for the rudest that is to follow, but it has to happen. We're, this is an order. So, are the Chester sisters also part of this? Um, I saw in a Jungfrau, or is this just, just the other Inquisitors that we haven't met yet? Because I didn't expect Chester's sisters to be. Inquisitors, and they don't seem like Inquisitors to me, do they? They're not Inquisitors, are they? I don't think they are. <laughs> we formed a precision, precision block blockade on the study door. I think it's best if you stay away from the door. <laughs> oh! Very important red truth. Extremely important red truth. So you're you have Gertrude, miss, you have the ability to use the red truth. Okay. Okay. New info. Very important info. But also you can use the red truth. Good to know. Can the Chester sisters also use the red truth? We don't seen any of them use the red truth before. But you're just casually out here spouting it, so. All right, for for your attention. I like how that's is that going to be her catchphrase every single time she talks. It's like for your attention, by the way. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you this. <laughs> All right. You're gonna have to use that red truth for the window as well. By the way, as we just saw Rudolph doing, you can. Exit out the window. I mean, Rudolph entered through the window, but you get the point. You can also exit. So you gotta have to use a red truth of saying no one left the study room um, since 11 at night yesterday. But what is that scrap of paper? Oh, so it is the receipt thing. Alright, so that red truth is just a follow up from the receipt that ever put up to make sure that nobody's gonna enter the study room. But even so, the smear scrap of paper proves that she lied. I mean, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It not necessarily. It proves that Kinzo never left the study, but it doesn't prove that Nazi lied. 
Natsu could have still been absolutely correct about meeting Kinzo, leaving the study, uh, and locking the study, and Kinzo could have still gotten out of this room despite that, during that time. Also, you can't, you can't prove that Kinzo isn't hiding in this room or isn't being locked up in this room somewhere in a hidden place or whatever. Or is, isn't that a Nox commandment though? I remember that being a Nox commandment. That no hidden places in rooms can exist or something like that, right? No hidden, or is that no hidden passages maybe? I don't know. You can't hide within a room. Wasn't that a hit? I feel like that was a Nox commandment. And her name is the landlord, the, the, land, the landlord A. Nox, so... I'm sure she's gonna follow the, the Nox commandments, right? So just like episode 1, she put the receipt there. Alright. No one, no one entered or left through the door specifically. It's impossible that father could have opened this door. What did you say? The window was locked, right? It was. It was indeed locked. But there are ways to explain that too, to be fair. There are ways to explain that too. You, exp you can explain it this way. You can explain it this way. Look. Um. Again, first things first. You can always use the devil's proof that you can't prove the fact that someone is hiding in here. So, Kinzo could have gotten out to study, and then someone from within shut the windows, and then uh, that person hid themselves in this room, and they have not left the study since 11 last night. So, there you go. And since you can't prove that someone isn't hiding in this room right now, Nazi society is still in the game. Now, I'm not really for not to side on anything, everybody. Just so you know, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to play for both sides here, because to be to be honest, I'm kind of, I don't know, I don't, I don't want Nazis to lose this, but I also don't want her to win this either. You know what I mean? I, I kind of, I'm kind of on a neutral side. I'm not, kinda, this, I'm kind of neutral side on the in this. Yes, Battle is technically against Nazi side in this in a way. But I don't feel like he is completely either. I kinda wanna stay neutral in this. I wanna stay partial. I'm not trying to to argue from both both perspectives. Um, so I'm trying to defend Nazi here, but I'm also not trying to prove her innocence either. Although that is what uh, that is to be fair what um Well Erica's trying to do. Well Erica's trying to, to prove that Nazi's not the culprit. Not necessarily that Nazi isn't hiding Kinzo's uh, corpse. Because Nazi being the culprit and Nazi, um, and Nazi, uh, hiding Kinzo's corpse can very much be mutually exclusive. The other windows are locked as well. They can't be locked on the outside by construction. That is a solid argument, though. It's a solid argument. Oh, Cornelia. Oh, okay. She okay. New, 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 uh, new, um, new inquisitor here, Cornelia. Again, same, similar. Okay, not the same, but similar headband. Um, kind of brown hair, red eyes. Okay, I'm just talking about how I was normalized with the red eyes here too. The badges there as always. Uh, same, similar uniform. It kind of reminds me of a maid uniform, but it, it, it's not fully. It's like a cleric uniform too. I can see that, and the thighs are out here as well. So that's a common, common trend. <laughs> okay. So their red shoes is just following along what the, what the family is observing, and they're permitted to use it. The windows were all locked. Guards blockade. All the all of the windows. Here we go, Cornelia. All right. 
So this is the second inquisitor, or third inquisitor if you include the, the landlord that we see, which means there are four left. Um, I, I want to meet all the inquisitors. Cornelius is, is just the third. So the way I heard her pronounce that was Eiserne Jungfrau. So hopefully that's correct pronunciation for the most part. Eiserne Jungfrau. In the name of Eiserne Jungfrau, the Imperial Guard is hereby permitted to make use of forbidden weapons. Um, there are actually a lot of German, if you guys didn't know, speaking of German and Eiser and Jungfrau and, and I guess that topic, there's actually a lot of Germans in Norway, if, 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 a lot of them, you know, I mean, when I, when I uh, go out and about, I hear a lot of German speaking people uh, out and about, just randomly, even on the way to ca my, the campus, the university, and different areas there, I meet a lot of German students and, and, and stuff like that, and yeah, a lot of a lot of German, um, con a lot of contact between Germany and Norway. Really, it's just kind of interesting. And I was even told this since high school. I even taught this by my German teacher back then. That yeah, Norway and Germany have that kind of tight connection, kind of in in, in, that, in that sort of way. So, a lot of German people or German-speaking people that live in Norway. So, yeah, there you go. Fun fun fact, I guess. Or I guess they could also, also be visiting, right? Uh, on, 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 a, on a vacation or something like that. Very possible too, but a lot of German. Alright. The Imperial Guard is hereby permitted to make use of forbid forbidden weapons. Wait, what? What does that mean? The Imperial Guard? Wait, what? What forbidden weapons? Oh, she has this double O is here too. Okay. Red Warheads? What? Transmit activation code? What? The password doesn't work yet. <laughs> Turn caps lock off and try again. <laughs> Oh, we'll fire without warning, alright. Alright, Beto, what's, what's your counter? Data link from four Archangel satellites. Homing format, verdict, model, conceptual guidance? Sure. Red word heads on top of that, great. <laughs> the chest of troops had laid down a pinpoint block block blockade over the door and all of the windows. Escape would no longer be permitted through any of these. Ah, Beto still seems confident. More like you're the one being locked in, locked in the study. You can't get out. Oh. For your attention. So th that's not just Gertrude's uh, catchphrase, that's all of them, all of the Inquisitor's catchphrase. For your attention, I'd like to inform you that your paths of retreat have been severed, Supervisor Dlanor. Let us now remove the sin and purify. <laughs> Again, more Karakana at the end. You will find that escape is now impossible. Alright. 
わらわを閉じ込めたつもりか<笑> Alright, we've heard the noise, so. So we can check out the character files as well. We can do that later though, it's fine. We don't have to check out the character files right now. The Inquisitor in Heaven and her subordinates surrounded the witch. Inquisitor in Heaven. The subordinates use a powerful barrier to cut off Beata's methods of escape. Demons prefer to fight, and as a result, they sometimes allow their victims to escape. But not Inquisitors! The Inquisitors are strapped and don't know escape! However, angels prefer to block off passages of escape, and as a result, they eradicate their targets without fail. I feel like that's in reference to what's happening to the human side as well, right? The culprit lets their victims escape sometimes, but when the detectives prone in on the culprit, they don't let him escape. No escape. You're the culprit. You will get caught. You will be caught. No, there's no getting out of this. I feel that's kind of what it's telling us. Have I screamed that the study was a perfect locked room? So why is he not here? Come on, what the hell's what the hell's going on? Where's father? Come on, Nazi, what's your comeback? Come on. Simply laughable. Alright. Actually let's read the character files now because there might be info on there about them that um could be <laughs> Rest in peace! <laughs> five five six is dead again! <laughs> but there might be information here about them that could help us understand more of what they're about to do and what and what's going on, right? Rest in peace five five six. Fire support. She saw she shot not to kill to protect her allies. Rest in peace, yo. Alright, right, that's the bunny that Rosa killed. So here we go, Gertrude, a member of the Eisernig Jungfrau, the 7th District Repentance Enforcement Agency of the Great Court of Heaven, Senior Assistant Inquisitor, Ranked Minister, First Class. As an Assistant Inquisitor, she is tasked with aiding during interrogations and hearings. In practice, execution ends up being the primary focus of most missions, and so she is usually assigned the job of using barriers to block the target's means of escape. On duty, she is calm, flawless, expressionless, and emotionless. However, in truth, oh, she's quite compassionate and is loved by many of her juniors. Oh, okay, Gertrude. Okay. She's showing more thigh than Delanor, I believe. Let's see. Just saying. Yes, yeah, she is. She's showing a lot more thigh than Delanor. I, I. So, ah, uh, God damn it, I have to scroll down again. She has already passed the exam to become a full Inquisitor and was offered a position in a different district, but she refused. She continues to serve alongside the Lanur, to whom she owes a great debt, waiting for a reassignment under her. Therefore, though she is an assistant, she is treated, tre she is treated as an Inquisitor, Archbishop 3rd class. And she's Archbishop 1st class, right? 1st class, okay, yeah, yeah, but she's 3rd class, okay. Gertrude, y'all. Alright. Okay. And then we have Cornelia. She's showing less thigh. Nah, okay. Just showing a similar amount of thigh. Both more than Lanor. Um, a member of Aizarna Jungfrau. The 7th District Repentance. Okay, yep. A Assistant Inquisitor. Ranked Minister 3rd Class. So, she's ranked Minister 1st Class. She's senior assistant inquisitor. She's just a normal assistant inquisitor. Okay, so she's a bit lower ranked than uh, Gertrude, but Cornelia's still there. She's still working. She's still doing her job. She has obtained high grades in academic exercises, but this is her first time on the job. Oh, her first time on the job. Okay, Cornelia, inexperienced uh, inquisitor. Okay, okay. She possesses a strong sense of justice and is currently cramming for <laughs> for exams. To become an inquisitor like the Lunar. Okay, crap for example. Oh, same. Same, yo. 
I'm also crying for exams right now. Oh, I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like, uh, Cornelia. We're, we're, in, we're in this together. Let's hope we both pass and with, with, ex with excellent grades. Let's hope for that. <laughs> Alright. Um, uh, he's currently crying for exams to become... Yep, and because he's like the landlord. Her current goal is to become more like the veteran assistant, Gertrude. That's a good goal. Good goal. Try to become as good as you can, you know what I mean? Just tr uh, More than trying to compare yourself to Gertrude and trying to become good like her, try to just improve on yourself and compare yourself to yourself, you know what I mean? Try to become a better version of yourself. She actually has a zealous personality, but she pretends to be emotionless in imitation of Gertrude. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. She's too innocent and pure for for one connected to heresy hearings, and she knows nothing of the dirty jobs and dark side of the professions. Ah, huh. okay. Gertrude intentionally selected her for this mission, which stinks of a senate conspiracy. <laughs> what does that mean? She did this to give Cornelia a chance to ask herself whether this sort of job really is the right one for her. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. See, now we know a little bit more about these two characters, so it'll be easier to connect to them once we hear them talk a little more, and once we learn more about her zeal and about her depth to the Lonor, right? So I think it'll, I think it's good that we're doing this. Um, yeah. It seems our guest has no such intentions, alright. Let us withdraw before we oversteer our welcome. Alright, you're gonna withdraw right now! Is that what Nats is gonna do as well? Beata waved her pipe and the air was split vertically. <laughs> then, a pitch black gate appeared there and slowly opened. It was a warp portal, the same as the pitch black holes that Gop used. Alright. <laughs> The pitch black gate opened. That gate led from everywhere and to nowhere. Both Beato and Kinzo would be would be sent to a place where no one could catch them. A place where no one could set foot. Much less chase after them. Oh, don't you agree that there will be nothing strange about him having some mechanism for getting outside without using the door? So that's the explanation for the gate that bear to open, right? This gate that bear to open, no one could chase after her. Be well, because it's a mechanism that maybe only Kinzo knows about and that's why they can't chase him because they wouldn't know about this mechanism there's, there's no way to know necessarily there would be nothing at all strange about the master having a hidden door I, I thought that was a Nox commandment, personally. I thought it was a Nox commandment. That's just me, though. <laughs> and where would we find one of those? I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was a Nox commandment, wasn't it? That there are no hidden doors? I mean... Hidden doors. 
Uh, or maybe I think it was, the Nox Amendment said that there's only a maximum amount of one hidden door you can't use anymore, or else that's too many hidden doors. That's cheating. Alright! This is a, an, an, uh, an uncommon... Uh, an uncommon... Uh, you know, grammatical error when it comes to Mineko. It's true that there have been always been unfortunate Unfo I mean you can't be perfect there's so much text in this visual novel so mistakes like these are, b are bound to happen sometimes so yeah C could be fixed I don't know it's true that there have been been always been rumors about hidden passage only the master knows of um, No matter how much people such as ourselves might search, it's only natural that we won't find them. This has been a devil's proof from the very beginning. That's why I was wondering how we if you can use the Nox commandments or not. Her name is Delano A. Nox, come on! You say we can't eliminate the possibility that a hidden door exists in this room. How dare you stoop to this? <laughs> Go on, try proving it exists, says Hideyoshi. Exactly. I mean, that's always been the case. This is this is what's so OP about being a human. No proof is required because it's a devil's proof. I don't need to prove it to you. It's, come on, we've. This is this is a trick done by Battler, and since episode two, we've we've been doing this for so many episodes now. Why are we asking for proof? On the devil's proof, we, I don't need to prove it. We know this. I, they don't need to prove that the hidden door does exist. They can claim it, and then boom, it's a Schrodinger's hidden door. Until you actually, yeah, because you can't disprove it. Can't disprove it. It's crazy. <laughs> The only way to do that, at least in this visual novel's context, is by using a red truth to counter that. Saying that there are no hidden doors, or there are no hidden passages. That's the only way to do it. Erika? Delanol? Oh wow. Oh, Delanol blocked? <laughs> oh, Predator! She is! She kinda is a Predator. That soundtrack fits with what she's doing right now. I will not allow a hidden door to exist in this room! That's right! That's a red truth coming from the Lanor. No, not allowed! Beata's Blue Wedge, which had been fired off as a farewell gift, was crushed with a flash of the Lanor's longsword. And the pitch black gate was crushed as well. Nah, you won't go anywhere. It wasn't just crushed visibly and physically. From that moment onwards, the warp portal which conceptualized hidden doors had been destroyed forever. Forever? Wait, what? I mean, they've been using Red Truth for a while now. They're kinda goaded. <laughs> what do you mean you will not allow hidden doors to exist? Right! Because of Nox! Of course! That's why she has the authority! It's because she's Nox! 
The landlord A Nox. That's why. Please tell me she's gonna use the Nox commandments. Look at how shocked Beto is. Wow. And wait a minute. What Beto's saying here is very interesting. She's saying that who is neither the owner of the study nor the game master, implying that the owner of the study can use the red truth regarding if there's a hidden door in the in the study or not. Which means people who own a place or own something, they are allowed to use the red truth. Does that make sense? As in I can, if I was in the world of Mimineko, within the world of Mimineko, let's say, I can say in red right now that I raise my hand, I raise my arm, for example, right? And I'm allowed to do that because I'm the owner of my body, I'm the owner of this room, so therefore I'm allowed to use that red truth. Someone from outside this room cannot use that red truth. They can't, right? However, if there are knocks, com if there are knocks, and you use knocks commandments, Maybe that's irrelevant? Interesting. But that's, that, yeah, that would make sense though. If you're the owner of the room, you could use the red truth regarding the room because you're the owner of the room. So it would make sense that, yeah, okay, yeah, you can use the red truth regarding it. Just like how Hideyoshi read the red truth to testify for himself in episode 3, right? If you are in possession of something, you can use the red truth for it. Um, yeah, I, can, I, I get it, I get it. A mystery, right? Hey! And that's also given in red. So it is Nox's commandments. It is Nox's third commandment, just like I, I thought. Just like I thought. You can't have any hidden doors in the mystery genre. I'm terribly sorry. Okay. <laughs> they are a blasphemy. They must not exist. We will not allow them to exist. Alright. So what's your plan now, Beato? <laughs> How delightfully preposterous. <laughs> What's the counter? <laughs> oh, are the ten wedges just Nox's commandments? Is that what the ten wedges means? Oh, I should have, I should have clocked that earlier. Well, <laughs> I should have clocked it after hearing that her name is Nox and all, the landlord A Nox, and also that there's ten wedges. That's when I should have clocked. It's, it's a reference to the Nox Amendments, but I don't know. Ah, right, it took me long enough, sorry. <laughs> just like usually, it's a kind of irrational argument that I just love to hear. That move won't work anymore, Beatrice. Well, you can use Devil's Proof for other things, not just for, um, not just for exits and, and and entering, not just I mean, not just for hidden doors, right? You can use a a, a red truth for a hidden spot in a room where Kinzo's corpse hasn't been found yet. Although, although, I'm sure it's a Nox commandment against that too, right? No hidden places within a room, no hidden hideouts, basically. She just said you're a normie. I am disappointed. Beato. You should at least serve some tea for your guests. It doesn't even matter if it's third rate down. Alright, uh 
minutes. I can... Uh, all right, I'm back. Please do entertain me, Beato Ricci son. You should at least serve some tea for your guests. All right. さあ、この密室書斎からどうやって金蔵さんが脱出したのか。青木真実で私に教えてください。Educate me with your blue truth. Yokaro. All right. There's still more blue truth I can come up with personally to block out what they've done so far. So let's see what Beato comes up with. ほいずら書くでないぞ。Death from stupefaction. Alright, make sure you don't regret it. Here we go. See, I hadn't thought of that, but that's a good point. I, I was thinking my blue truth for was something more along the lines of Kinzo still in this room and never actually went out of the room. But, uh, fair. Fair. Okay. Right? Because uh, there's also a possibility that. Um, you know, there's also the the whole inherited name thing that Batra came up with. That Kinzo's name is inherited to someone else. You also have the whole thing that Kinzo, um, Kinzo's been cosplaying, right? Cosplaying as someone else. A bunch of different stuff. But okay, um, it's possible that after slipping out the door, Kinzo noticed the trick with the receipt and correctly returned it to its original place. That red truth has already been used. That's true. That's fair. After 23, the, the door to the stair was not open even once. So he couldn't have returned it back. So that blue truth is kind of useless. That's true. Ho ho. What did he invent? <laughs> You're we're becoming like Battler now, are we? Gora made small bombs. <laughs> ah, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> Kinzo's a brilliant mage! <laughs> I love this battle style arguing. This is why I love the human side so much, because we can argue like this. We're allowed to do this. <laughs> Alright, what's your... <laughs> I can't... I can't get over that. Dude, small bumps is still the best though. Small bumps is so funny. Maybe there's small bumps hidden in their food that they ate and exploded in their mouth. <laughs> oh, that, that's golden. That's golden. All right, all right. Here we go. Alright, truth. No such substance exists. Right, that's another Nox commandment, isn't it? A substance which requires long scientific explanation. Wasn't that Nox's fourth commandment? Or fifth commandment or something? A, 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 something that requires a long scientific explanation to explain how it works can't exist in, in a mystery, right? It must not exist, right? That's another Nox commandment! The, the landlord is coming after you, bro! Or says Beato! Ah! Nox's commandments are, are tricky, you know? They're tricky to deal with, you know? Okay, 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 here we go, here we go. Alright. If we're gonna go crazy ham like Beato. I feel like I have another few tricks up my sleeve. Let's see. No such substance exists. It must not exist because of Nox's fourth commandment or something like something some commandment. I I remember reading it. Um so okay, 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 okay. Um What if the door let's see Ah, because Eva put the receipt on the door, didn't she? Let's try to come up with something. Ah, I, I, but I should keep reading. I, I really am, I am trying to come up with my own thing here. Um, 
No hidden passages. Alright, so, so there is the one thing that I said earlier about how Kinzo could could still be in the room as we speak. Locked up in here somewhere. They just haven't found him yet. Right? There might be some mechanism where he has hidden hid himself in the room. Um, so that is one possibility. Um... Kenzo, um... Hmm... The thing is, I know Kenzo's not actually in the room, if that makes sense. Like, as in, I, I'm... In theory, I am against Beto here, but I do want to try to argue for her side. Despite me knowing that her side is probably factually wrong, and Kinzo was never actually in this room, um, in the study, or at least he's been dead since the start. But I do want to try to argue for her anyway. I do want to try to help her out. Hmm. It must not exist. Alright, let's keep it for now. We can come up with stuff as we go along. Uh, but I, d I don't want to be helping out Naughty too much here. But I do want to help her out a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to be biased against her. Even if I know she's in the wrong. I get in, in the probably at least. Again, we don't know it for for certain. That's that's what we're that's what we're dealing with right now. We're trying to figure out if eh, if she is a hundred percent wrong or not. But yeah. That's another Nox commandment. That's crazy. That's another Nox commandment. It doesn't. Not, it can't exist because that requires long scientific explanation. It must not exist. It goes against Nox's commandments. Nox's fourth commandment, or whatever. You cannot make something that requires long scientific explanation. No way. Must not exist. Yeah. Such a machine does not exist, I will not permit it to exist. Yep. Nox is coming after you. Nox is really biting you. Yes. That that's that's Nox. That, they can do that. See that this is what I, this is how I argued as well back in episode three regarding Nandro's death, right? I I made a, a, a the screen TV thing that could have killed Nandro, uh, but now I know because of Nox's commandments that TV can't be true because Nox's commandments does not allow it to exist in red does not allow it to exist, so that's crazy. Nox, use your commandments. Come on now. <laughs> In the name of God. <laughs> wow. Because here's the thing. Even if something like that exists in the future. This is 1986. Even if something like this exists in 2981. Someone makes such a thing right that's a thousand years in the future but hey shout out if you're watching this in 2981 by the way shout out hello <laughs> now but if it's such a teleportation device did exist then right uh and it becomes common common knowledge right because i mean just like how telephones in 1986 right it's common knowledge you don't need a red truth or a blue truth it's not it doesn't require a long scientific explanation to explain that telephones exist because they do exist right but in theory to explain how they do actually exist it does require a long scientific explanation but because they're so ingrained in society anyway people don't really question it you know people don't really like y you don't need to prove that this e device exists to prove that you know someone call uh, uh, someone called nazi for example like right? nazi's child culture but you would need to do that for a teleportation device because we haven't seen a teleportation device. It's not a common knowledge. People don't know about it. And so you, it requires long scientific explanation because it's something that doesn't exist in our world as as of currently. It's not a common knowledge thing, so you can't use it. Because even, even if stuff like t uh, headphones, telephones, TVs, phones, uh, all that stuff, 
that does require long scientific explanations, in theory, to explain, right? If you want to explain that to someone that doesn't know anything about them, it's going to take you a long time to properly for them to properly get it. Uh, or not just a long time, but just a long scientific explanation. And honestly, if you want to explain those stuff to someone that doesn't know anything about them, you got to start explaining stuff that doesn't have anything to do with them to begin with, to get it as a background. Either way, it's a mess. From now on until the end of time, in the name of God, I will not permit them to exist. Even in the future. As long as the, the teleportation device doesn't become a common thing in the future that everyone knows about, that everyone can use, then yes, she can do that. It is, yep, I knew it. I was like, I think it was its fourth or something, command, fifth, I don't know. It was one of the commandments. It is forbidden for unknown drugs or obscure scientific devices to be used. Oh, and she's a servant of God. She's an archbishop, so she knows the progression of humanity. Dang! Wow! And so teleportation devices have been declared forever denied? That's a crazy claim, Delanor! <laughs> According to Mineko, teleportation devices will never exist in the future? That's wild. Therefore, from now on until the end of time, I will not allow for such technology to exist. It is not permitted. That is wild. But... In the future, who knows, maybe someone in the future will make such a device that it will allow to turn to smoke and go through keyholes. You know what I mean? Maybe someone will develop a teleportation device. Why Why are you stopping that now? Why? why? I, it's forgotten to the side, so... so in, okay, fine. I'll allow it. Fine. But, but that would mean... But that would mean we already know that it can't... Like, right now, as you speak, y'all, right? Even if you... Whether you believe in God or not, right? You wouldn't, couldn't happen to know whether something in the future existed or not, right? You can happen to know if it... Cause, cause, like... You can't prove that... Wh what? How would that work? Right? Because cause, cause it's saying that... God has, has apparently declared their existence forever denied. Right? And... Sure, if it says that in, let's say, the Bible or some other religious book, sure, yeah, of course, obviously, then okay, the resistance has been declared forever denied, sure, I get, I, I can, I get that, I can get behind that, but what if it's not directly stated in, in anywhere that, okay, there's no such thing as a teleportation device, then who knows, maybe technology will get that far, just like how technology got far enough to send us to the moon, right, technology got far enough for me to be reading Umineko like this and recording a video for y'all to watch, for example, this, what I'm doing right now, wasn't a thing a hundred years ago, or even 50 years ago, this wasn't really a thing. So, so if, for you to deny something, so you know for certain that it's gonna exist in the future either? Okay. Beato and the landlord had just gone through a massive exchange of red and blue. Very important exchange. However, not only had the landlord not taken any damage, she also showed no signs of fatigue. Beato showing plenty of fatigue, you know. Beto might have been a fearsome witch, but blood flowed through her veins and she did breathe. She felt both pain and fatigue. But Lanor was like a doll made of marble. She felt no fatigue, no pain, no hesitation. Even if Beto's sharp wedges had aimed right for Lanor's eyes, she wouldn't have shut them. No, it was doubtful whether she ever even blinked in the first place. Hang in there. <laughs> the arrogance of the gods. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it seems to not be able to drink together. Even the strikes, which had defeated Batter over and over, had absolutely had absolutely no effect on the Lanor. She had expected that already, more or less, but she hadn't expected to be repelled so easily. Well, to be fair, Batter doesn't have assignation from the word of God. What is this about? This, these Nox commandments are a whole different level than what Batter could have could have used, right? Or could Batter really have used these Nox commandments as well? Because he can also use the word of God, I guess. I don't know. If he didn't know about them, that they existed. Come on. <laughs> I'm not decrepit, I'm already dead, idiot. <laughs> Beato experienced something she'd only rarely felt during her entire life. It was probably what she would call hardship. Oh? As Nazi tried to comf comfort her, Beato quietly brushed aside her hand, and she regained her posture again, showing off her witch's pride and her continued re readiness to fight. I am disappointed. I was only trying to measure your abilities, alright? <laughs> no your place, Golden Witch! You're not nothing compared to us gods, archbishops! Chester's sisters are still still kinda there. There's Shuketh. Beto's expression became tense once again. No longer was there any trace of mischief. The mood changed. Proud dust. I another new soundtrack. We're getting a lot of new soundtracks here. Here we go. Ikuzo. Ho ho. Why not accept your locked room? Alright. What's next then? If you do that, then we have a couple of things you can say. Firstly, the parents and you know the people who entered the room never found Kinzo. Or Kinzo's there, but they didn't see him. Right? Maybe their eyes were too tired or they're too tired fr or too they were too shocked from seeing dead bodies and missing bodies that you know Kinzo's disappearance has also gone to them there we go maybe <laughs> really thank you Gertrude <laughs> for your attention I beg to inform you that Beatrice has changed her pattern of attack thank you thank you <laughs> thank you for, for the attention Beatrice who had, un who had until then thoroughly resisted the idea that a locked room existed, did an, an, an about face. She declared that she would accept that propos proposition. Of course, this didn't mean that she'd surrendered. This was a new attack of Beato's. The Lanor noticed this and readied herself. Why did Beat Lady Beatrice not acknowledge the lit locked room when she's trying to destroy it? Nyeh. She's probably going to claim that Kinzo existed outside of this room. Reactivation of the great Lady Beatrice's war portal con confirmed. Here's the problem with Beato doing that. If you he, and this is why I didn't use that argument to begin with. The reason why I didn't use the argument that Kinzo was never in this room or existed outside this room is that Nazi claimed to have met him in the study 
here at 11 o'clock yesterday. If if Kinzo always existed outside this room, then that would make Nazi I would immediately contradict what Nazi was saying. That's why I didn't use that argument. Unless Beata has a plan against that as well. I mean, I mean, that's my name by the way, Amin. If you guys didn't know, call me Amin. I mean, <laughs> this is heavy copium, but it is, it is honestly much better than trying to argue that, it's, that this is in the locked room. So fair enough. Let's go with that. All right. What's a counter with Lanor? Oh. After bouncing at an erratic angle, the witch's stake pierced the top of Lanor's foot. <laughs> okay, Asmo. Itadakimas! Oh! Oh, straight up to Kuodorian. He might have gone to the magic Kuodorian. Okay, okay, big claim, big claim there. That's not a bad blue truth. The power of Beato's blue truth began to dwell in the stake of Asmodeus, piercing the top of Delano's foot, changing the stake into a blue wedge. So, so the stakes are changing into blue truths. Interesting. It is valid. Here we go, Delano. How are you gonna counter? Fair enough. A cyclone of gold butterflies swept up with Beato at its center. The magical power of the pitch black gate that had been smashed was once again refilled. If you could hold the Lanor off here somehow, this time she would be able to warp Kinto out of the study all the way to Kodorian. That would be a far way to go, and that would clear Kinzo for good for the entire rest of the day. So, if she can do that, then whew, she's good. The Lanor moved clumsily, trying to pull the blue wedge out of her foot. But it didn't even budge. Of course, Beato didn't miss this chance. No, which would? See, this is what I was thinking as well. I, I even said this earlier that maybe this name change. You could argue that this name changes. Kinzo isn't actually Kinzo, but Kinzo's name got, is passed on. But I also felt that like the argument seems kind of cheap too. I'm not gonna lie, it does seem like a cheap argument. But uh, again, both these arguments like okay, fair, it works. I, I mean, listen, do what you can, do what you gotta do to survive. All right. I didn't want to argue with what she said earlier because I felt like uh, Nazis being pretty clear about how she met um, about how she met um because <clears throat> I felt like Nazis being particular about how she met Kinzo in the study at that time. So I didn't want to I didn't want to ruin that for her. I didn't want to change that up. But if she, if that's how Beth and Nazi want to argue, then I right, fine. I'll join up with you. Fine. Uh, but then th this this method of arguing produces a lot more theories that I can come up with then, I feel like. I like how 
The tables have turned for Beto, where she's now taking on Battler's side of things and using the blue truth. When typically she's on the other side, using the red truth to deny Battler. So this is an interesting switcheroo for, for this whole scenario. <coughs> Here comes Beelzebub! <laughs> Beelzebub's blue wedge pierced the base of Delano's neck! Of course, even this didn't cause her to flinch, but her moves were restricted even further. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> Is that really all? Come on, you're better than this. Ho ho. Here we go. I'll hit you with the main dish and the dessert at once. So watch your stomach and explode and die. This was my initial theory, like my first thought of, and my biggest thought of how Kinto could still be in this locked room. But yeah. Yeah. Because technically the Nox Commandment doesn't block that necessarily either, does it? Um, I don't think so at least, unless I'm, I'm wilding. Um... Isn't that another Nox commandment? Isn't that a Nox commandment? I thought there was a Nox commandment about how you can have like a like a doubles. Right? Wasn't there a Nox commandment about that? Right? Might be that Nazi ordered by Kinzo to act as his proxy, considered herself both his representative and another Kinzo. In other words, it's possible that Nazi was also Kinzo. But I don't mean that Nazi is acting as a double for both, right? I don't know. I feel like uh, <clears throat> that wouldn't that, that also break Nox? Or I guess this is kind of a remix of that, so maybe it doesn't? That is another possibility, yes. It might be the most beautiful blue truth yet! Delano Reynox! So I feel like that last, the most beautiful red truth you just said, uh, blue truth you just said at the end there, can be blocked with one of the Nox commandments. Uh, just, just want to say that right away. The seven sisters appear from Beato's golden tornado one after another, and they pierce the lunar with blue wedges. Woo. Four blue wedges were buried into her neck, her chest, her gut, and her thigh. 
So four plus the two that have ever been sent, so six of them went out. That means uh, um, that means there's there's one more. There's one more seven seven stake left, including the one buried into the top of her hood. She had been oh okay five never mind okay so they're including the neck as one of them alright including the one buried into, into the top of her foot she had been pin cushioned by five stakes there's two left Leviathan has Satan beat me set on to fight Satan what about my turn <laughs> <laughs> They were all ridiculous arguments, but they came fiercely one after another. A lot of blue truths all at once. Though a total of five wedges pierced Lanor, her expression didn't change in the slightest. However, her movements had indeed been limited. <laughs> you can't be twisted logic me. That's not just something witches can use, that's just a human side thing that we use twisted logic. Oh they don't! I thought they did. I thought that, that last one did. But I guess it doesn't really count as not to be a double, I guess. Fine, fine, I get it, fine. They're all valid. Fine. What's up now, Dlanor Anox? Also, her own father violated the, the, the commandments. Wow! Was, and was, isn't her father also Nox? Unless her name is Nox and Delano is her surname, so her father's name is also Delano and he had a different name and she's the one that made the Nox commandments so then she killed her own father, executed her own father, that's kinda wild. Now that the Lanor had been pinned down, this was the last chance to recover their magical power and escape. Once again, a pitch black gate began to rise slowly in front of Beato and Kinzo. Though the gate had once been opened by simply drawing in the air, it wasn't so easy in the study now, filled as it was with the power of denial. So Nazis also in this meta world arguing and, and Eric is coming in here too. Alright. I can fight against you. Huh? Erica grinned at Nazi with a smile more demonic than the real demons. Fair enough. That's a good place to end it, in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of Imineko when they cry. Um, uh, this has been fun. I'll see you guys next time for some more. Alright. We have new characters introduced this part. The Inquisitors. The Lanor, most importantly. But also Gertrude and Cornelia. 
I'm sure we'll be seeing more of them, both next part and in the future episodes as well. And in the future of this episode too. So, yeah. Cool. As both Amakusa and... Well, as Amakusa would say, yeah. Amakusa says cool. Erika says good though. Yeah. Alright, let's see how this is all gonna end up. Uh, I have a lot of homework to do for next part. Oh, I do have a lot of homework to do for next part. A lot of wretched blue truth to write down. I'm not going to write down every single blue truth. Especially the ones that were easily blocked off and whatever. But the more important blue truths I'm definitely gonna write down. So, yeah. But I'm gonna write down most of the blue truths. The red truth, of course, I'll, I'm gonna write down all of them. So, a lot of homework. A lot of red and blue were used this part. So, yeah. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this one. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching this at least as much as I enjoyed reading this. What a wild part this has been. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Peace.